Hello. Hello. Hey, Catherine. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. I'm a little tired. I hope I don't fall asleep at the meeting. <laughs> it will not look good. <laughs> hey, Fern, how are you? Hello. Hey, you're not in a car. She's not, right? You're not in a car. That's pretty good. Me? Oh, weren't you in a car? I'm, yes, that I'm home. Okay. There is some light construction going on upstairs, but hopefully that won't be too loud on the call. <laughs> Hi, Sean. Hello. Hey, Kathy. Hey, Teresa. Is this everybody, right? No. I think so. All right, um, and I assume it's, is it Ben that's behind the, the Tunbridge Public Library account? Whoever's back there, thank you for, for getting us set up. Um, hey, Ben. Hi, Ben, thanks. Have a good meeting. I'll be around the corner, uh, you know, if I hear something that, and I'll, I'll keep an eye on the participants. I'm not around the corner, but I'll probably be working on something else. Um, okay. but I'll, I'll be available. Okay. Thank you. Um, let me just pull up the agenda. And, okay. Great. So shall we get started then? Sure. All right. Um, so we were going to start with community comment. Um, unless Ben has something to add, I don't see any of the other community members on here now. Keep up the good work. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, so then the next thing, um, I think Fern um, had written to the state library consultant um, with some questions about compliance um, and had forwarded that response. Um, so yeah, does anyone have questions about that? Or I think it was pretty straightforward in terms of when executive session could be used or not. I think the, the other question that I had with that, which um, is maybe more of a process question for the trustees is, is more about, um, I think in, in our section, we'll get to like when it's, I guess, appropriate to have open community sessions as part of an interview process. So I think there is clear precedent. What I took from that email um, from the consultant was that there is clear precedent or it's, it's allowed to go into an executive session in the case of a job interview. Um, and that's pretty clear. And so I think then one thing that, that we should think about is are there times during this process where we would not want that to be in an executive session? So that's something that, um, in the community input section, we have a little bit, uh, some questions around that that we can go through. Any other questions or comments on the response from the state consultant? One thing that I took from that at the, towards the end of her email was that the committee definitely needs a chairperson. So um, I don't know if you have to vote on it or just you know raise your hand and if you're the designated person, Anna, whatever the committee decides. If, if being chairperson means running us through the agenda, I'm very happy to, to keep 
uh, doing that. I don't know that I want too much more power than that. <laughs> Great. And depending I did. on how long this process keeps going, I'm also happy to um, pass that torch at some point. Kathy, you were going to say something. Yeah, I Fern mentioned the one thing that I pulled out of there too was that um, saying, yes, definitely you should have a chair. Um, it didn't sound like that was necessarily like a rule. Um, I'm not sure. Um, but I I don't think it would, if, if we're having a chair, I don't think it would be a good idea to like rotate we talked about rotating chairing of meetings which i think there's merit to that but i think we just need a, a chair for the committee um and and if you're willing to take that on you clearly have good leadership people do like voting or so we were not the decision not under the impression that we are going job was, was the interviewing interviewing absolutely wow. but how do i mean that's what a hiring committee does and then i felt like our charge got widened to okay. include the job description and the community yeah. input but what do other people think well i i think what she's saying in her response is the trustees need to charge us with that we don't get to pick so sure. did, they, did they charge us with that i know we were charged with the first two tasks of Good the job description and community input. Right. But is it like we're going to get charged with things at each meeting or is there like an overall, because we were struggling a little bit with the timeline and working backwards right. from that and not really having direction on that. So maybe on February 8th, we need to ask the trustees to give us an actual charge so that we can understand that. Sounds That's good. I, yeah. and I submitted a letter of interest. I thought it was to interview. Okay. Right. I thought that's what the, my job was. So right. adding the job description, that's my last time I, I think I might have said, I'm confused. What are we doing now? Like, what exactly is our role? Because I thought it was entirely to review candidates, conduct interviews, and then send recommendations back to the board, who then they would do reference checking and final interviews and choices. So maybe there's more confusion here about what our role actually is. <clears throat> If I could just say, um, when I, I was just appointed as trustee and Fern would know, um, I did pick up, there was a manual for the trustees and there's a whole section actually on hiring of a new library director. And it's pretty well spelled out. And maybe I would suggest that the trustees familiarize themselves with that. And then maybe we could extend the charge on the February 8th meeting to say, because according to this, if I just read, um, you know, some boards conduct all the interviews with trustees present. Others like to have a small committee interview pool candidates and then hold a second interview with finalists. So, you know, I think that the, the, the group of the hiring committee definitely has more obligation than just what we've done so far. Um, but Fern, I guess that would have to come from the trustees specifically delegate that. We'll put it on the agenda for next Monday. Yeah, it's really outlined. Because there was some good information in here. There was a little pamphlet in the front, too, about hiring. Um, and the only other thing I'd add from the email, and I think this came up when we were trying to get the meeting pop properly warned and the agenda posted, is I think we, if we consider ourselves an extension of the um, regular um, trustees, not a special meeting. I think if we follow those guidelines for posting, that would probably be the safer way to go. And I don't think we're a special meeting. I think we're an extension of the trustees committee meetings. So it's that like a 48 hour rule instead of a 24 hour maybe. Yes. For posting of agenda. I think the language in the open meeting law that I circulated the other day is it's, it's regular versus special. And I think that language applies to either the trustees or the committee. So I don't, I don't see us as an extension of trustee meetings. I think it's a regular meeting of a committee of the trustees okay. appointed by the trustees. So either way, regular and follow those yeah. guidelines. Yeah. But I see what you're saying, follow the regular rules, not the special rules because we're planning regular meetings. Fern, could you just clarify what you said a moment ago that you would have added to the February 8th trustees agenda? Is it what Teresa just suggested, familiarizing them 
with that um, document she just described or is it writing a formal charge for this committee or both? I, I think we need to discuss uh, and clarify other than what was stated previously about job, about the uh, you know search for the library and et cetera, et cetera, to clarify so all of us, the hiring committee and the trustees are all on the same page with what the hiring committee is charged to exactly do. Okay, and Great. you know, hearing what Jenna was saying about submitting a letter of interest for this committee, I think there might be some <clears throat> general knowledge about hiring committees and what they normally do, but I think maybe the library had to take a few steps back to do a little bit mm -hmm. of groundwork before digging into that um, hiring process just because of the way things transpired. So, um, so it feels like maybe the scope of this committee is a little bigger than your average hiring committee. And if the trustees needed to hire another director, you know, maybe all this groundwork will then be in place for the next time. But when you only do something every 37 years there, you know, there might be some <laughs> extra work that has to be done is kind of the way I'm seeing what, what happened possibly. I think it will be good to clarify, but a hiring committee is like a hiring committee. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I really wanna have it spelled out, but I felt like what Jenna said was our core charge. <clears throat> And then as Kathy said, we went back and sketched in a little of the background, like the job description and the community input, but good to have clarity. Yeah, I think um, part of one thing that I would love clarity on is, is like how the process, are we also mapping out the mm -hmm. process mm -hmm. of right. like how many <clears throat> stages of interviews <clears throat> would there be, or is that something that's already set? So I think that that's also a question that I would want to hear from the trustees next time. Yeah. Um, so Fern, could you also put that on the agenda to sketch in what, what who comes up with the timeline and the process? Is that part of our charge? Should we be sketching out the, the timeline or trustees? We need to discuss that, I believe. I mean, personally, I, I think the hiring committee is charged to do all of the above, but <laughs> I, you know, don't go by me. You know, I'm just one person. So we need to. And I don't remember, I don't have the minutes in front of me from the, the meeting where we set up the hiring committee and what we were charging you, us, we, the hiring committee to do. <laughs> so I can't, you know, answer the specifics of that either. I just um, looked at the the call to action that the library issued back in December for this committee, and it says the Tumbridge Library trustees are looking for several community members to join the library director hiring committee as the first step in determining the jobs parameters as we proceed with the hiring process. So I know there was that meeting and this <laughs> committee was formed, so we have to compare. So I think that call to action was really looking for some groundwork, but it's being called a hiring committee. So we definitely need to clarify and get that. I think her recommendation and her response was to really get that in writing, what that formal charge is. Ben, go ahead. Um, I realize I'm sort of public, I'm sort of just trying to keep an eye on things, but as weird as this is, I, hope, I just want to submit a question slash request that since it's uh, substantive to your discussion, um, is there a way that email or the text of that email can be posted as a public document? Otherwise, I think for me to post the video, they wouldn't make as much sense um what it would make more sense if that because I, I when we had a lot of attendance early on um at the trustees meetings i think people were not clear and it sounds like there's now new process to try to get clarity if 
I mean, we could just wait for people to ask for the text of such an email if that came, but it might be helpful to people who are following this to, to, to get that text. Um, as someone who hasn't seen it, I'm highly curious. I'm, so my, I'm, my imagination runs wild. <laughs> um, so just just a request to consider, and uh, and I'd be happy to to uh, make sure there's a way to post that as well. Ben or and and committee members, I can put the e the email into the minutes to be read um, by whoever looks at the minutes. Um, I think that's a good way of, of uh, approaching it. Yeah, in terms of just that kind of basic. Of um, yeah, yeah. yeah I've done that in the past with information from the um, state library consultant. So I will certainly do that again um, in the minutes for this meeting. Um, this might be a trustee question, but is there a way to post the minutes on the website as a document instead of like a running body of text on a web page? Do you know what I mean? Like, is there a way to have it, you like click, so you had a list of minutes. Right now you have to scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll through a web page to read past minutes. And now that there's this committee, there's minutes on top of minutes and you're, you're just scrolling on a web page. Is there a way to have a list of hyperlinks? So this could be a trust. Yes, that's what I was gonna say. If there was a president's on a, on a salary thing that might come up. And it was very nice because I had to go back pretty far and uh, within the year and you just kind of, I kept checking dates and it wasn't there. So I went a little further. And um, so I don't know, Ben, if Wendy would be a reference for you. Um, I know that she offered to um, help us if we needed to do any work with the um, pulling yeah. people out. If you did go into executive session, there's a way where you get sent off into cyberspace for a little while. And then <laughs> That, yeah, and I think probably as far as like the posting, I, it occurred to me after trying to like invent the stuff on myself and realizing it's always better to ask for people who know how to do it well, um, that Jeff Hansen may also be, I'll, I'll see how, I'll see how it's handled between the two of them so we can make sure, yeah, that's um, able to be displayed easily. I'm keeping um, the Google documents of the, um, not the minutes, I guess the agenda, but maybe that's, that could be one way to do it. Oh, I think we lost Fern for a second. Huh. Um, do we want to get a meeting? Um, anything else before we move into the, looking at the job description and the community input? Just maybe just for the um, the record, so we're pretty well set then on who is posting agendas and then who is the warnings and the agendas. Because um, I know I felt like I kind of kept jumping emails and um, Fern was set to do it and I didn't realize. <coughs> and and posting of agendas is something I, I don't know, Ben. I know when we were warning trustee meetings years ago when I was on, if anyone else remembers. I don't remember putting up agendas. I only put up time and place kind of thing. So um, do we want to clarify who, who's willing to take on those roles? I'm in town all the time. I go to my post box. I wouldn't mind being, if it's a lot for Fern to come in, I don't mind posting the warnings and agendas. Um, do we want to clarify who's going to do that on a regular basis? I wonder if since Fern has been doing that and since it looks like she just dropped off the call, maybe when she's um, back on, we can double check. Um, okay. I'm happy to keep kind of starting the, the document for it. Um, but I think, I think it was part of it was the access to the website, which she had. Um, right. I'm referring to the specifically to the physical, okay. physical um, outdoor postings. Um, um, I had did have one question. It, I know that the open meeting law says the posting of the meeting date and location needs more than five days in advance on the website and three places in paper. Mm -hmm. And then it says the agenda is two days in advance on the website and three places at Burnham in the library. Would it be 
just every year if we had the agenda, it would be posted together. Because I'm have to post it once. I got kicked out for some reason. I totally lost a meeting. Um, the trustees have been posting the warning and the agenda at the same time, five days, at least five days ahead. Um, but unfortunately, uh, the way I did it this, this past week is I went over the village twice. Um, and for me, that's quite a trip. Huh? It's like 14 miles just to town. So, um, and, and Vern, <laughs> when we lost you there, I was offering to do the physical postings. I, I live right, you know, I'm, I'm right here. I go into my post office box almost every day. Um, it's really not that big. I'm, a, I'm literally less than a mile from town. So, okay. Well, I'm what we're... happy to help with the physical postings. I know the places where we, we post them. Right. Yeah. So. I think the, the way that we've been putting the agendas together, I think that I don't see why we couldn't have this um, done five days in, in advance. So I think that's maybe what we should aim for this time, um, which it'll be a little bit different this time because it's actually the, the trustee meeting, not just the committee meeting, but um, making sure that, that that info is out earlier so that it's just one, one trip or one post for whoever is, is doing that. So, and so Teresa, you'll, do the physical postings and Fern will um, the website guide. More to be great. Thank you, Teresa. So once I know it's all approved, I print and then go post in those three places. And we're saying five days, the whole thing. So the next uh, is an uh, update about the job description. So I'll turn it over to those of you who are working on the job description. Um, and maybe for this also, if there are any documents um, I don't know if there's a way to share them now, and then we can also make sure. The job description, about that fine line between being really thorough and comprehensive and being down to earth and appropriate for the Tunbridge Library. So you folks can decide if we threaded that needle or didn't. But um, I'm assuming we're not going to wordsmith the job description now as a group. But, um, but of course, assumptions can be dangerous, but um, I, it makes sense to me if we get the document to everyone and you get a chance to read it and have a little thought time, feedback, and then, and maybe we should get it to the trustees before Monday also. What do we think team? <laughs> So I think I just shared it with all of those parties uh, 10 minutes ago or so. And I wonder if I might just do a screen share now to pull it up on the screen and show you the format that we used. I don't have the vision of what trustees they have on my book. So you know, again, Catherine, like this is a first draft, kind of unclear. Did it touch on what we were hoping for? What we were hoping for? Uh, it's been to, to discussion, but... Uh, um, I have it on open on my screen, but for some reason it's not opening up under the screen share options. So if we can't look at it together tonight, how would you like, just wanna read it on your own and kind of wordsmith it that way? Or what's the best way to do that? I'll, I'll admit the whole Google platform is not something I have a lot of experience with. And I saved it as a Word doc on my computer because I was afraid we might lose the whole thing. I just didn't know how Google worked. Okay, I'm going to be brutally honest here, but um, also let you know that I'm totally flexible. It wasn't in my um, view that we would now all wordsmith this document. I felt like the charge of the three of us was to come up with a really good job description. So I don't want to, to, to go backward. I mean, definitely we want input from you folks from uh, the trustees, but um, I would hope that if you could look at it during the week and also if we can get it to the trustees and they can have read it and then we can have, and maybe Fern, it can be on the agenda for the trustees meeting and we can get all the feedback then. Um, I, I would have a question of if you want, and this, I think it would be really hard to wordsmith live during a committee meeting. That's just a, a task that's hard to do. 
But since it's in the format of a Google Doc and this whole committee is charged with the job description, should all of the committee members by a certain date, like let's say within 48 hours or 72 hours, at least view it and add comments, but not edit it could be a way. Sure. And Jenna, it, it wouldn't disrupt the, the document at all. We could all just add comments if we had them um, right into the document. And then the group that's working on this could decide whether or not they wanted to further adjust before then sharing it with the trustees prior to the meeting, if you wanted them to look at it in advance. That way the whole committee can feel like they contributed right. or gave input before reporting on the 8th to the, the board or the trustees and sharing it with them. That sounds great. So Kathy, what's the time frame? How, how long do you think is realistic? Well, it's, it's whether or not you want the trustees to have it before the meeting to view it, or if you want to present it to them at the meeting and like Jenna just did and walk them through the kind of the thinking and the format and the question about the vision and hitting on all those yeah. points. And so when the community input group has a chance to share out, we did have some questions of, you know, is that feedback we're looking from the community from that would feed into that job description um, or not. So there is a right, little bit of right. that balance we're trying to strike as well. So I, I, I go ahead, Teresa. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> um, I think, you know, if, if maybe we just take that first step of sharing within the committee to really feel that, you know, everyone had their input and, and their chance to view. And um, I would just say that we really did work on looking at all of the um, existing job descriptions, as well as samples from surrounding uh, libraries, locals, other locals, and then even going broader on ones that are um, on the websites, just for that purpose of reference. So a lot of, you know, I, th I feel like we were pretty thorough um, in what we did, but I, th I think my comfort level would be with the next step being the committee. And then when the committee has, you know, everyone's kind of had a good look and, you know, different eyes and ears on it, then, you know, may, maybe bring it to the trustees. That sounds I great. At, but at first glance, um, it looks awesome and really well organized and really thorough, which I think that was the main thing I wanted. And I think that if you guys don't have points that you wanted to bring up for discussion, um, you know, I, I can't imagine I'm going to come up with anything that you guys have, have missed because you definitely have a lot more expertise um, in, with the library and with that role than, than I do. But um, yeah, I think if the rest of us can just quickly put eyes over it and then share it with, I think it would be helpful probably. I, I guess my assumption would be it would, might be helpful for the trustees to get access to it before sure. their meeting. Um, but I do think it's helpful how you just framed it, Jenna, as well. So. Given the speed with which Anna just managed to look at it, do you think it we could give you till like maybe Thursday and then on Friday get it to the trustees and they would have the weekend? Would that work? Yeah, I I would I would say that should certainly work. And I I would just personally approach it with any um because i agree just looking at it um quickly it, it looks very thorough and and well organized so um thank you uh the three of you for doing that it, it, it looks good but i i would um reserve comments or, or i'll approach it reserving comments as just kind of broad um you know over overview questions that might be resolved by this committee or might um, be brought to the trustees only because of, um, you know, like a, just a kind of a quick, for instance, is, is there a way to put percentages on each of those um, big um, areas of the job, you know, so finance comes to 25% of the position or, you know, just questions like that, that probably the trustees would have to weigh in on before anything is posted. Um, so that's kind of how I'll approach it. And I can certainly do that before, um, before end of day Thursday. So um, Teresa made a great point that I left out. I think this draft has maybe five different um, sample job descriptions in it. 
that included several surrounding libraries as well as the draft that was presented to us. Um, and as far as how to get it to the trustees, is that something that I should do at this point or how does that happen? So they have it ahead of time. Oh, well, <clears throat> if we get feedback from the committee by the end of the day, Thursday, maybe we can uh, talk on Friday and see if there are changes we want to make. And then we'll talk about getting it to the trustees. Perfect. Okay. Sounds good. For the weekend. So trustees, firm, Teresa, does that sound doable? Just so that you, at least you're not coming in cold. Well, Teresa, you won't be cold, but um, yeah, no, if that, we get that it. Sounds, yeah. And can we share just for the first um, stage, we can share to, to the committee using that Google Doc folder that we're all accessing? Because it is, it is a Google Doc now. Yeah, I think what I shared is a Google Doc, but I couldn't, I followed Ben's um, instructions in the chat mm -hmm. about how to share a file and I couldn't share that version. So okay. I just copied it onto a Word doc just right. for the sake of putting it in the chat. Um, but yeah, I think the version I shared with all of you is that Google Doc that you can now edit or what have you. So that would be the first step to share it with the committee in, in our little committee Google, Google Doc folder we have going mm -hmm. and then we can figure out best way to send it off to the trustees from there so jenna when she shared it we got we all got a, a copy of it over email that if you click on it it's a google doc but it is not in that shared committee folder that Teresa is mentioning so i think just any one of us if we all have edit access to that would be able to make a copy and pop it in there but that would be the one then we'd want to put comments on so it might be good before we start commenting to get the right file in the right place um I can work on that during the meeting. I have never done that before. As I mentioned, I am not proficient I could, with Google Docs. I could help right I'd give it a shot. But I know a few of the committee members have already started putting files in there. So maybe, I mean, that would be a way to do it. Or um, So I do have one other question about input. Um, these meetings are public, so they're open to the public. And they the public can come and give input on these things as the trustees works on them. Um, I also wondered about staff input and mm -hmm. I mean, Jenna, I, I would be curious what your perspective is on that from an HR perspective. If you're redoing job descriptions, do you like go to current staff and ask them to look them over and say, does this accurately reflect what you've done and some of the visions, you know, the trustees might have for the future or um, I know when we did job descriptions at our office, we had our staff help with that process. So I'm just curious about that. Well, I mean, there's lots of ways to do it, of course, but I, I um, it, it, it all comes down to purpose for me. Why are we doing this? So is there a thought that the existing position should be reworked, revamped, re-envisioned, um, you know, had this person was focusing on that, but we want that position to do this. You know, I don't really know to what degree we might, the, the trustees or the new director might want to try to look at those positions differently or were they all exactly the same, you know, the way that you want them. So, you know, it's one thing to bring job descriptions up to speed based on new language and technologies and what have you. But if you really, if it's a change of position, you know, I think that requires the person who has the vision of where you want those positions to go because the person in the job might not necessarily understand what you're looking to change or why you'd want to change it. It may be different than what they're currently doing. So I, that was the other confusion I had with the drafts that we were given of all the other positions. It just looked like a report of what I've been doing. I had no idea if that's what the trustees want it to be and if that's what makes sense, which it could be, it's just unclear to me. The, the other jobs other than the library director or under the priority of the library director, not the trustees or the hiring committee. The only thing the hiring committee is charged with is the director's job description. Um, the library director is in charge of reworking the other staff. Um, I do believe it's important that the hiring committee reach out to our current library director 
to get her input directly on what job description the hiring committee is working on. Sounds good. Um, and also, I think I may have dragged our working draft into our shared folder. So I think it might be there, but, um, and yeah. So when we share it with the trustees, we should share it with Jean too, yeah. All right, any, any other questions or comments on that before we move on? Thanks for all the work on that. Um, so the next section is um, speaking about uh, the community input. And we, this is definitely gonna be more about discussion. Um, I think we brought up a lot of, we had a lot of questions that came up. Um, so I'm gonna try and um, in the chat, I put in a link that should bring you to a document that, that we've put together and I'll kind of briefly run us through this. Um, I see Nicole is on here also, and um, you should have access to that, but um, please don't edit it if I mistakenly have also shared editing access. Um, so this document, um, I kind of broke it down into three sections. The first section assumes that there will be some kind of survey, um, which actually I think needs to be a little bit more of a discussion um, and put in some questions there, which the ones that uh, favorite ones are highlighted in yellow. There's one in gray that we would probably cut out. Um, we learned this week that there is another survey that's being done by the library right now about program content. And so when we saw that email go out, um, we immediately got a little bit concerned about not wanting to duplicate surveys, not wanting to um, overload people with surveys. Um, and so I think we should talk about like what, whether then this other survey should still happen, how we can make sure it's not asking the same thing um, twice and taking away from that other survey, um, which is for a different purpose, but it is happening at the same time. Um, the second section, and I'll just sort of run through this before we open it up for discussion, um, is still about the survey about kind of, I, I put in a section about like, what are the goals of the survey? Why would we be doing a survey? Um, the format, um, distribution, some ideas for that. And then the third section is really more about the hiring process and what are different ways to involve the community, community meaning um, both the other staff at the library, um, us who are not trustees on this committee, as well as then the community in a more open and public way. Um, I think there are a number of issues in, that come up in terms of a job process, a, you know, a hiring process and having it being totally open and that really takes any kind of confidentiality or privacy um, out the window. And so I think that's worth um, you know, thinking about. And I think that's part of why this community committee was, was put together to bring in more of a voice. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so I, we've put together kind of several ideas of how that could work. I tried to, I think we tried to put more of an exhaustive list and some that I, I personally would not recommend and put the reasoning for why I don't think they're appropriate. Um, and yeah, I would love for people to, to kind of take a look through that. And I don't know if maybe we want to actually start with the third section. Do you, Anna, are you able to, it looks like Ben gave us all access to share our screens. Would you be able to share? Because I'm only noticing that I think three people are in it. So what you just described, not everyone was following along. And so I wonder- I've got hard copy. Oh, oh. oh you're wow. ahead of it, Catherine, nice. Um, but I just wondered if it, then you might be able to flip around. Um, and if you Let can't, me... I'd be happy to, because I just clicked on it and it did give me the ability to share it. Um, yeah, I think- There we go. Is, is that, uh, I think I'm, how much of my screen am I sharing? There, okay. There we go, that looks pretty good. Great, so so yeah, this is the third section. Kathy and Sean, do you, what do you think about starting with the third section as opposed to starting with the survey? That makes sense to me, yeah. Yeah, I think okay. that makes sense, yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I highlighted, uh, <laughs> sorry, I, I should have put this in a different order. Um, 
so the first kind of type of, of input would be like a totally public Q&A with finalist candidates. And all of these are kind of assuming that it's, you know, the maybe last two or maybe three sort of finalists that are at this level of, of um, community input. Um, I think the pros is that it's very open. Community members get to meet people. Um, the cons are, are really that um, uh, I think there, there could be bias if some candidates are known and some are not. Um, definitely confidentiality concerns if someone is applying who is in a position at another library or something and doesn't want it to be fully public that they are considering leaving their other job. You know, those are the reasons why this could happen in an executive session and be more private. Um, and we also brought up the question of maybe, you know, while that might be very uh, appropriate, I think Kathy said that for like the principal positions at the Tunbridge School, that was part of the process, but maybe that um, is not as appropriate in this kind of process. Um, and maybe I can kind of run through all of these because I think some of these are like either or, um, you know, scenarios. So another option um, was sort of a public forum with the committee. So being sort of an intermediary, intermediary where we have had some public forums, but I don't think it was expressly for the purpose of kind of collecting um, that uh, feedback for the hiring um, process. And so if we open it up and not so much have a discussion, but really just invite comment from the public about, you know, whether that's questions that they want, priorities that they want, just hearing all of the sort of things that are on people's minds as we go into this. And then as committee members, if we're in interviews, we can make sure that all of that is, is brought into the process. Um, I think that would also be a little bit more flexible if we wanted to do that, have multiple sessions at different times, make it more convenient for people to join that way. Um, I think, you know, the cons, some people could say it's redundant. I don't think it's redundant with any of the meetings that have happened so far. Um, and uh, I think there's, it's a little bit more limited, you know, in terms of uh, it would probably be community members who are already somewhat involved, but I think those are also the community members who want their voices heard in this process. Um, and if anyone wants to jump in at, at any point, please feel free. Um, the next one was hiring committee participates in the interview process, which maybe this was assumed. Um, it wasn't totally clear to me. So that was something that we definitely recommended, but I think based on our earlier conversation, it sounds like that is, is probably assumed that will be part of that interview process. Um, having, this is kind of later in the process. So having a public kind of meet and greet, even if that's virtual with, you know, a new director after the hiring process, I think that's maybe beyond our purview, but I think it should be, you know, said that there should be a sort of open public welcome and an opportunity for, for people to, you know, meet whoever's coming into that. Um, and I don't see any downside. I think it would be odd if that does not happen. So I think we should pass on that recommendation. Um, one question that, um, that Kathy brought up is like, are there other staff members that should be part of this process? Um, I know that that is kind of common and I know that we have two trustees on the, the hiring committee, but um, I don't know if there's another staff member at the library currently that, um, that could be invited to be part of that process. Um, I think again, that, that community voice of the other staff is a really important voice that we want to make sure that they're um, heard and, and not kind of excluded from the process. Um, but I don't know if there are other concerns with that. Um, and uh, so either, so that there were kind of two options for this, either something with all library staff or having one representative of library staff um, who joins the process. And I think there's precedent for both and other kind of hiring processes. Um, and then Kathy, um, maybe you can explain kind of how this looked in your mind, but a finalist sort of walk through virtual in person, I don't know what, what will be appropriate or allowed um, with the staff and kind of a meet and greet. And I think especially, you know, if there were a finalist who were not from Tunbridge, I, I would hope they would have an opportunity to actually see the library. Um, and I think one, one aspect of this is, is keeping in mind, you know, the selection, but also then if there's a great candidate that is given that opportunity 
have we done everything in this process to make sure that they're as excited about working for the library and taking this job, um, you know, which is not a, a guarantee. So those were some of the ideas about that. Um, I would love to hear people's thoughts, concerns, other ideas that we had missed. And I think the end goal is to present kind of this is what we think it should look like um, to the trustees. I'm gonna stop for a second now. Um, I would just like to comment on some of the questions you had, especially on the um, interview process and who may be involved. I would refer again back to um, the trustee manual and I, I really, I'll, um, I'll go ahead and, and do an email to the trustees directly um, in really encouraging them to um, familiarize themselves with all of the information that that's been provided um, because it actually does address those concerns. And what I'm referencing is it's, um, it's given to us by the Vermont Department of Libraries. And um, it, it has uh, links and websites, but it, it, it does have some input there as to involving um, current staff on the interviewing process. So it'd probably be good if we all kind of worked off that baseline from, from the trustee standpoint um, to make sure that we're not, um, you know, outstepping any bounds or, or, or going against anything that's being recommended from the, from the top down on the Department of Libraries there. But I think it looks good. I mean, there's nothing that's, that's jumping out at me. I just was kind of cross-referencing and, and uh, I think that this little piece is going to be a nice guideline for the trustees to kind of, um, you know, make sure we're just really um, diligently doing our work on taking what the committee is offering and then bringing it to fruition with the trustees in the final process. Yeah, I think it looks great and really helps to get a handle on how to take community input and make it practical, which we really want to do. Um, and personally, I like the idea of some public forums, getting feedback, using that to inform our questions. Um, it sounds really good to me. I, I just, um, I have one question about reporting out to, and maybe this would come at the end of the agenda, I'm thinking of it specific to this community input piece, like how there's some things that are recommended and some things that we really think are topics to consider and talk about more. Um, is, what has it been determined if the trustee reps on this committee are going to be the ones to represent the committee and present this? do our report outs at the trustee meeting on the 8th or who would be doing that? Um, and how do we decide what we share? I think we came to a pretty good conclusion about how to do that with the job description. That was, it feels very contained and finite and easy, like tangible to be able to do. This feels a little bit more like there's a lot of conversation here. So I don't know, I'm trying to envision how to get this ready. And what are the talking points and who is going to do that on the 8th? So I, um, I would encourage us to not leave any of these as like discuss, but for us to kind of, um, you know, I think that, that the second one, the public forum for community members with the hiring committee, um, I would, move that to something that we recommend unless anyone has concerns about that. And I think the first one of that totally open Q and A with a finalist, um, I would probably drop that unless anyone thinks there's a really good reason that that should be part of the process. Um, and I, I think we should go to the trustees and I don't, um, you know, with sort of you know, here's what we recommend, here's why, and here's how it kind of covers all the steps in the in the process. Okay, so that that makes sense. So who, how would we do that then? Just by sharing a document ahead of 
the meeting once we do that or and then would there be like a spokesperson for the committee because i can't imagine at the trustees meeting that like this whole committee all of us can talk on all the points i mean i'm sure we can all be there and provide input if we feel like something was missed but is there someone who's representing um these and is that a trustee or is it are we appointing someone to do that and I'm I'm happy to to represent um, you know this stuff um, and uh, yeah okay and I think um, you know I don't, I don't want to volunteer you but you did I'm, I, no I'm I'm very happy to do it I don't I don't want other people to to feel like I'm you know taking yeah. too much stuff but um, but then yeah. I see what you're saying then it's up to this committee tonight to kind of help hone this so that yeah you are actually presenting a set of recommendations. Yeah, okay. yeah. And then I think, um, you know, if they have questions, I think it, you know, would obviously then be helpful for, for all of us to kind of have a good understanding of, you know, why we recommended something and not something else um, and be able to, to give any input for other questions that they have. But um, yeah, I'm happy to, to clean this up a little bit, make it as clear as possible. Um, and I'm realizing as we're talking through this, I think something else that would be really helpful is to um, maybe after, shortly after the trustee meeting to be able to also share publicly um, a little bit more of a, a timeline of what this will look like so that community members also have a sense of like, where is my opportunity for, for input going to be? What stage of the process is that? So I think, I think that could also kind of lend um, some extra transparency to the process in a way that it's like, you know, even if you're not right there in the room, we're trying to include people as much as, as possible. Nice, and I just wanna say, Kathy, thank you for clarifying that because I feel like we'll go into the meeting much better organized because of those questions. So thanks for that. Yeah, I was thinking about respecting their time because their trustee meeting can't be a hiring committee meeting again like all over again right because right. some of the last meetings it was took up a lot of that time because i know there's still other business that needs to happen outside of this um so do, uh, anna do you want to pose i heard you allude to those questions but do you want to pose them because i i know you know we haven't had a lot of time ourselves as the subgroups to really hash all of this out um, so me kind of feeling like a general committee member right now and hearing you walk through it all, I've, it's helped me kind of gel my thinking around it. And I'm wondering if people would be comfortable, especially in light of what Teresa said about that, that document, if we could actually recommend that the trustees consider adding a staff member either to this, I mean, I'm thinking to this committee, um, every principal search committee I've been on has always had a staff member on it, but I know schools are different, um, different structures, but I just wonder if that would be really helpful because I know that was part of the issue leading up to this was not getting a lot of staff input in the process. So is that a recommendation we could make? Do we know if staff were invited before? I wouldn't want to force a staff person if they were like, no, no, we're busy. I have no interest in doing that. Well, you guys, um, the staff, the staff were at the the meetings um, at which the invitations went out. So I don't want to force them either. Maybe it would be nice to ask again. But they had the opportunity, like all of us did, to um, indicate interest, right, on the committee. But uh, it is, it it might be really nice to have a staff member. I think it could be perceived differently if the trustees understood the reasoning for it and the trustees made an invitation because I think sometimes at those meetings staff feel like their role is staff and when you're talking about community they might feel like they're not community they're not in that group and I really see staff input and community input as two different things and at one point we said oh if we issue a community survey staff members can answer that survey but I thought wait a second we kind of have different questions for staff members when hiring a director they're not the same as the community like what programs do you want for your children or you, you know it's it, I think the questions for staff are different 
so I think the request would be to have a staff member join the committee with a staff lens, not as a community member lens. And I think that invitation went out to the community for a community lens. So I think those are two different things. And you're right, you can't force anyone to do anything, but the invitation um, could make a difference. I, so I have two thoughts. One, if I were interviewing for the director position and I was not like, given the opportunity to speak with a staff member that would be reporting to me, I would find that, um, I, I would find that odd. Like that's something that I would want from the experience um, in, in applying to the job. So even if they're not kind of fully on this committee, I think that bringing a staff member into the interview process at some point um, seems important. Um, the other thing that I did put in the, the kind of cons is that, um, and I wanna just be you know, very upfront that I assume that there will be I hope that there will be a, an internal candidate for this. And I think that that could bring up um, some awkwardness or some you know, potential bias. And I think that, that uh, there can be ways where you are um, asking for feedback without necessarily asking for a direct recommendation um, in a way that kind of takes that pressure off of um, a staff member if they're then interacting with with someone else that they you know already know from from working there, so I think that's also something that is worth um, you know thinking about at any stage in the interview. How is how is feedback taken? How is that used? And how is that done in a way that is not putting anyone in a kind of uncomfortable position um, if there's a an internal candidate? Um, so that is maybe a something that comes a little bit later. Um, but I think that if we're inviting a staff member. Um, into the interview process, we should also keep that in mind. And Jenna, I feel like, I don't know if you have ideas about kind of best practices on, on that side or, you know, of collecting info from interviews, um, but I wanted to make sure that was put out there. Yeah, no, I think your points are well taken. I know sometimes in the, the school principal positions, we may have had a community interview from quote final candidates if there was two final candidates so that folks in the community and employees may have had an opportunity to um, ask questions or be involved in that process. But that does of course require that the candidates are okay having their application process be public. Um, so I wonder if then um, based on, on what Teresa said that there is some guidance in that document um, maybe we combine these two of library staff interviews with finalists and library staff rep in the interview process and just say um, some, some level of staff involvement um, at some point in the hiring process. Um, and we can figure out with, with the trustees, you know, what that ought to look like. Um, that sounds good. Well, so I would have a question on, would we want to recommend that staff input at the committee level now? Like while we're working on the community input, while we're working on, I, I just, while we're working on the job description, while, so I, I hear everything that's being said and I understand and that bias piece is tricky, especially with a really small um, organization and a close knit community. Um, so yes, it would be great to have some ways to kind of handle that to make sure it, it works well. But I'm actually thinking of a staff lens on this committee in doing the work that we're doing now because this committee ended up being bigger than just the hiring process. What if we, before the, the trustee meeting, what if, um would we want to ask the trustees to, to see if any staff member is interested in being more involved with the committee or if there's someone who at a minimum level would want to be involved in um, the interviews and kind of see what interest or availability or time commitment the, the staff are, are willing to put in? Yeah, and maybe if it doesn't end up where people aren't feeling strongly about having a staff member on the committee, it's figuring out ways to have staff input. So for example, having a committee survey and a library survey happening at the same time. Like if we had a staff member on this committee from the beginning, that might not have happened. Um, or if, you know, someone who, if 
there's not a staff member on the committee, could we still run a draft of a community survey by a staff member to kind of look at it and see? So I would really love to have that person sitting on this committee with us because I could see us all asking lots of questions. But if that's just not the direction others want to go or there's not a willing staff member to do that, is there some way to still get staff input at certain stages of this, not just the hiring and the interview part, just because this committee's scope is clearly bigger than, than just that hiring piece. Collecting community input is, if I were a staff member, I think I'd kind of want to be able to contribute to that in some way before surveys started being released into the community. Wait, Anna, you're muted. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, good thing I talk with my hands and you can tell what I'm trying to say. Um, Fern, do you know if there was a invitation or an encouragement specifically for any staff to be on um, this committee before? I do not believe so, no. Okay, and Ben, you just had your hand raised. Ben, did you want to say something? Yeah, I just want to echo the uh, uh, what Fern uh, was just saying. Is I, I and I also think what Kathy was speculating. Like if we've got a staff member present, you don't have to speculate so much about what staff think. You can get a sample. But yeah, I, you know, I think I, I'm more outspoken than most in some ways. I, so I'm you know, raise my hand and say stuff. I think staff didn't feel like, um, yeah, it didn't occur, I think, to staff, including myself, that, oh yeah, I could be on a committee. That, that wasn't a thing, you know? So finding an alternative way to get input if, you know, since maybe the, you know, the committee com composition is, and I, and I realize it is, we're, su we're talking super small. There's the director, there's, uh, Marsha and Mariah, and I don't know, I haven't, I, you know, you know, I know Marsha served as a reference for Mariah, so, you know, it really, it's really tight. There's a way to tap into their input, I think, without, in a more abstract way, so that you don't, um, and, you know, then there's me, that's, you know, there's four people um, doing various things. I just, just from seeing what has transpired, I just really want to encourage the hiring committee to see what the opportunity to, when, when you tap input, you don't just get new ideas, you also help people um, feel participant, actually, because they are participant, you know? Um, so you might get brand new stuff and you, you might just get a different emphasis. Um, so I just want to encourage people, you know, um, as a, as an as a staff member, but also as an outsider, what makes the library, as as a, as a as just a general citizen, is what I mean. Um, it, uh, what makes the library and most institutions work is the trust and and uh, embrace of the you know of the community. And what I heard that sort of prompted this committee being formed was there need to be a lot more of that. So this is your opportunity to tap into that. Um, I would hope it would be a, like a big, a big source of energy and, and, uh, input, um, way to bring people in maybe, um, who might not feel currently like they had, um, a say or, or that their thoughts mattered. And I, I'm, I'm sorry about the overlap with the programming survey. I wish I'd, you know, been able to think or anticipate, you know, of course, the survey is going to be part of this. Um, so hopefully we can make that not undermine your efforts and get a good information from people. Maybe they'll give you good practice with the first one. I don't know. I don't know. I, that's what we were thinking. We just want to steal your information from that survey. Um, well, that good. shouldn't be a problem, but I, <laughs> I think there's a real value in, in people seeing you, the hiring committee, or whatever we're calling, you know, the, the committee as being a, as being interested, like, yeah, we, we're, 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 in, we represent you, we're into, 
um, making sure you know what's going on and, and feeling present with what's going on in the future of the library. Okay, I talked enough, but I just wanted to say that it, tapping in puts separately it might be for the staff, probably makes more sense for from the staff point of view. Okay. And there's probably a lot we can probably add to, to enrich or, or help reinforce, you know, some of your efforts, maybe in meaningful ways, I hope. I don't want to take the discussion away from involving the staff, but I just want to say as somebody who read and filled out that little um, survey, it was very differently oriented. It was very fast and it was program oriented. And I don't think it will interfere at all with some of the good questions you guys are thinking in terms of community survey. So that's all. Yeah, I think, um, so So just to close the loop on the staff involvement, what do we think about um, uh, just kind of routing that through the the trustees and asking them to, to kind of actually, you know, actively invite and, and ask if any staff members would like to be um, more involved and, and what level um, of involvement they'd be comfortable with. And we can figure out how, you know, to, to fit them in and, and maybe rather than trying to find that before we know what people are willing and able to do, maybe see what staff members um, say and then bring one or more in based on that. Just to clarify, I'm thinking that the very presence of me as a staff member speaking is kind of weird to me, like in a, in a, in this environment. So I'm trying to like rationalize it. And so the more you guys feel like the trustees as a board have endowed you with freedom to do it, um, or handing it off to the trustees um, to, to do it. Um, it yeah, I think it would be hard for us to serve on the hiring committee, um, but there's certainly ways that, you know, that we can be invited to participate. Um, I, I will just say just, you know, I, I could read this to you. It's public. Anyone can download it. Um, but it basically just says, um, let's see where I was reading from. Um, it's we're up to the interview process. Um, an hour is not generally enough time, particularly if you include a tour of the library and introductions of any staff even if staff and volunteers are not included in the interviews, it's good practice to obtain their impressions of candidates if possible. After all, they will be working with the director and they do state that it's not wise to um, include the outgoing director in the interview process. But this clearly states encouraging a staff member as part of the interviewing process. So do they need to really be involved in, you know, the background work we're doing now and then when it comes time to be saying, okay, you might need to work with this person. You know, what what things would you want to be asking? What what qualities are you looking for? And 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 um, and get the insights from the staff at that time. That might be a comfortable place for a staff member at that time. And it would also, at that point, we would be dealing with um, applicants and inter mm -hmm. you know interview setups. So we would know if you know indeed there was some um, current staff involved in that applicant process we you know would kind of set that all aside if that makes sense i know what i'm thinking i don't know if i said it properly. <laughs> gosh i would like to see uh, probably through the trustees just putting out the uh invitation well, to one more time or specifically to the staff, just asking the staff, would they like to be involved to some degree? I think it ought to come from the trustees maybe. Um, and I appreciate what Kathy had said, the difference between uh, the community members and the staff and maybe the staff didn't feel uh, like the invitation was for them. But Anna, maybe as part of what you're speaking to the trustees about for us on Monday, you could ask them to reach out to the staff and find out to what extent they'd like to be involved or is that too general? I, I mean, I guess um, 
Yeah, it, it's tricky with, with it is such a small staff and, and having an internal candidate, I think, makes it um, a bit more complicated than it than it otherwise would be. And I wouldn't want to put anyone in a position that that they, you know, don't feel comfortable with. But um, uh, yeah, I, I think we can recommend maybe that that it's part of the the interview um, process, but say you know we would like for you to to put out an invitation to staff, and if there are staff who would like to be more involved than that, um, then you know we can open that up. Okay. Um, for the sake of time, because it is eight fifteen already, um, I want to just go back to the these first two. Um, Things. So I heard some, some enthusiasm for this idea of a, an open public forum with the hiring committee where it's more of just like a listening session for us to kind of hear what's on people's minds. Is that something that we feel comfortable moving to, to label as recommended? Any concerns on that? I can't see everyone's faces right now. So speak up if there are any concerns. Okay. Um, and then, uh, do we also feel comfortable, um, removing the idea of a totally open public Q and A with finalists as, as part of the interview, um, and saying that having the committee, having a staff member, having an open forum, um, is, is a good way to collect that in a more confidential and, and appropriate manner. Anyone have concerns with that? Um, and we're going to merge the, the library staff ones. Um, okay. So in our, in our last, um, time here, so I think that, um, one getting any info that we can from the survey that, that is going out now in terms of programming, I think might be helpful. And then if that's incorporated at, at, you know, during the interview process, being able to, you know, help a new um, director candidate understand, you know, what people's priorities are in that sense, that's great. And so then that just means that we would not have uh, necessarily questions that are focusing on programming in, in this other survey. Um, Sean was, was suggesting, and, and I think there's value in this, you know, keeping it pretty brief. Um, you know, not having a five page survey for people, but really um, trying to, to cut that down. And so I don't know if with the questions that are on here, if that's too brief. Um, the longer question here about how would you rank the importance of the following skills? I think we would wanna um, go back and look at the job description that folks have worked on and align that. That was a great idea, um, Kathy, to, to make sure that we're you know, asking about the same things that we've already defined on there um and uh is it i was looking back at the minutes from the last meeting and there was i think a line in there that said fern um that you were going to look into seeing if we could get the survey questions and results from the 2019 survey not that i mean that was long enough ago that i think it's okay to draft this without those, but I think it could be helpful if we just were able to take a peek at that survey, how long it was, how many people responded. It might give us some insight on formatting this one. I, I do have that information here. I don't know, is it something you can share on your screen or can it get- uh, well, No, I actually I printed off a copy of it. Okay, and I wonder if it could be maybe put into that folder. Um, um, or, or what's a way for us to be able to see that? But, okay. yeah. I could put it in the folder. Um, or sending it out by email to us. Yeah, either way, whatever works for you. Because Eve did send me a copy of the survey and also our results as to how it played out with the um, response responses that we received. Okay. There were, I can just give you a brief overview. There were 14 questions in the original survey. Um, and 
we sent the survey out to the listserv, the front porch forum, the town, we physical copies at the library, the town hall, and the post office. Uh, most of the copies were actually given out at the library to um, patrons who came in. Um, and we received 44 responses. But I can, either you, what do you want me to do? Either put it in the folder or email I, I think when it comes to actually working on that section of this project, I think it'd be really helpful if I could set my eyes on it and 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 look at it a little bit. That's helpful, the information that you just shared now. Um, it may or may not sway what we end up doing, but it could spur some inspiration or, or ideas as we're crafting that. Um, so if there's a way to share it over email or putting it in the folder or or both, that would be great. Whichever or both, back, you tell me. I think, yeah, if you can put it in the folder, that would be great, Fern. Um, so for these questions then, if this is, uh, does anyone have, have additional questions that they would want us to, to consider other, um, you know, things that would help us either get info that will help us, you know, during interviews or um, will be helpful for the interviewee to, to know. Um. There is a, um, you know, kind of the, the thought that um, I was approaching this is that to, to get community input, the community input that we want, it's, um, and that, this is why I suggested just keeping it very, you know, uh, just a small set of questions is you send out a survey that says, help us hire the next library director, be very clear, have the questions be, um, you know, directly on topic. So frame them in a way so that you know, the kind of five to 10 year vision of the Tunbridge Library, you frame it in a way of what vision do you want the next director to bring to the Tunbridge Library for the next five years, for the next 10 years, just so the community members, again, you know, like what Ben said about um, just people feeling part of the process. A lot of that, um, I think, is uh, is with the language that you use when you go out with a survey like this. Is this you know we're we're genuinely asking for help, and if and if you can carry the survey questions with a through line to the public forum, the survey might actually act as a um, you know it might get people thinking so that if we have a come ask the hiring committee. Um, whatever you want or bring ideas to this public forum. Um, you, we might get some interesting response there too, um, which all goes back to creating a timeline, I think, <laughs> because so that when the survey goes out, you there's a clear like, here are, here are some simple questions. Uh, we'd love if you answered it. And on this date, we're gonna have a public forum just to get more involvement across the board. This doesn't answer the, the timeline question, but I love the shortness of the questions. And I think I'm more inclined to give a little more thought to something if, I, if there aren't a whole bunch of questions, but I would just, there might, it might be nice to have, and you probably were, will do this anyway, have an other comments at the end, just so that if, somebody has some other ideas that didn't get asked. Um, but yeah, short, sweet, and well distributed sounds great. I really like the way, you know, I think when we talked about community input earlier, we struggled a little bit, like what, what, what does community input mean? And that the way that these draft example questions are worded is really like Sean said on point. These are on the task. Every single question, 
either has the word hiring or library director in it. So it's not just general questions about the library. It's, you know, what type of five or 10 year vision, you know, for the library director to bring, or do you have a question for the library director candidates in the hiring process? So they're really specific to this process. And hopefully then it does achieve that goal of the community feeling like they had a chance to be involved in, in that aspect of it. Um, so I really like the way that this ends up being so direct and clear what the goal of the survey is. And I think the survey can be brought to the community with messaging that way. And it will set itself apart from any programming surveys that the library has done, um, which are have a totally different purpose than, than this survey. Great. So is there, um, I don't know if Jenna maybe or someone, um, someone who worked with the job description, um, it would be great if you could look over these kind of skills and attributes on that one and see kind of if, if that lines up, if there are other things that you guys pulled out that were really important that you think ought to be um, kind of listed on, on here. Um, I thought it was important to have kind of, you know, some balance of hard skills and soft skills, you know, something like energy and attitude that is front of my mind for a, a library director at a small town library. It wants to, you want it to be a, a place that you feel happy walking into. Um, yeah, but if, if one of you could um, take a look at that and, and, and we can also take a look at the job description, I guess. So how about Friday, the, the job description committee, we're going to be talking, I mean, emailing to look at your comments. And so I'm looking, I can't see my other committee members, but um, we could do it then. Yes. Is that okay, Jenna, <laughs> Teresa? Yeah, of course, Catherine. Just on quick look, I feel like they're pretty well covered already. But if we need to yeah. Yeah. Um, highlight them, we can certainly do that. I, I thought it was a better approach to let, you know, if someone wants to say all of them are very important, they could, um, as opposed to like ranking them. Um, I don't know if anyone feels differently about that. But. Um, so I can, I'll clean this up a little bit, but that was really helpful getting, you know, everyone's um, input on that. And I'll try and put it into um, a format that maybe works better also for, for sharing uh, next week and as kind of a more of a proposal for the, um, for the trustees. Um, and uh, yeah, and I'll let people know if there are other, other areas that I need additional input before next week on this. Um, it's 825 now. I think I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Um, hmm. So, uh, oh, excuse me. Go ahead. I was just going to ask if, um, Fern, if we could have an agenda item for the trustees. I really do think that we might be at a point where we do need to consider a timeline. Um, I know that it came up as a conversation um, with the job when we were working on the job description. Um, but do you think we could? project out windows of time to, you know, complete the gathering to get the advertisement going. And um, we as trustees, you mean to I come mean, up who, with a timeline or who, who does that who says, you yeah. know, let's get this, get, get this, get this party started. Okay. <laughs> um, I know that it's going to take some time. I was asked how long an advertising window is recommended. I tried to find some answers. Um, the only thing I really found was they said definitely a month. And if you don't get enough response, then run it longer and try more avenues of advertising. So I feel like that was one piece in the, in the, in the former search that maybe um, was limited. And I, I wanna make sure we allow ourselves enough time. And um, I, I am, 
you know, um, thinking of Jean, we've asked her to stay on and I think it would be nice if we tried to have some vision as to, uh, you know, when this process is really gonna get going and get that advertising out there and allow plenty of time for the interview process. And um, this one piece I've referenced here, it says it's a three to six month process. And would we say we're a month in at best right now? Um, so, and maybe the rest of the committee would have some time to digest that and think about it and, and maybe have some insights to offer um, on the 8th how much time we need for other pieces and um, yeah. We'll certainly put it on the agenda. Okay. And of course that will, the agenda will go off to you, Teresa, as well as the other trustees before we post it, so. Yes, we'll, and if you would please keep emailing to me at my personal address until I can get in on the trustee email. I haven't, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't conquered that yet. <laughs> okay, yeah. It's a, Thank you, we'll figure it out. Gmail's a pain in the kazoo. Well, <laughs> but thank you. So um, the next agenda item is scheduling the next meeting, which I think is, um, you know, that's the trustee meeting, which is already scheduled. So we have sort of a, a week off and I don't know that it makes sense to schedule beyond that yet. Um, in terms of deliverables, um, we'll take a look at the job description, get any feedback back to um, folks on that uh, in the next few days and I'll clean up that community input um, document and be ready to, to share that at the trustee meeting. And to end, um, I see Nicole's on here. I don't know if there's any, any community comment or any further comments, questions before we end. Oh, I just wanted to see the process. Thank you. Thanks for joining. Anything else from committee members? All right. 829, ending with one minute to spare. Have a great evening, everybody. Enjoy the snow. Thank you, yeah, Anna, for, you too. for coordinating the agendas and, and helping run the meeting and taking on that chair role. I think it's really helpful yeah. to have that direction. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah and I, thank you to everybody for the comments and work. Yeah. Nice to see you all. all right, have a good evening. Bye, all. Bye.